Um, your resident uh, spell slinger had flown right out the window and then flown up to a window and frustratingly it was not <laughs> a breakaway Hollywood movie window um the wizard here seems to be slightly cornered battered and beaten your resident bard is taking a uh Radical. expected good distance from the battle um your resident rogue is remains silenced I believed for I believe it's at least six more rounds right um still rounds says seven was that spell effect says seven i will i will trust that well seven rounds remaining so puts it at yeah round 13 it's done so yeah um so yes the uh, these blue guys here if you recall uh seem to have some type of um regenerative power as a matter of fact i believe this one here has just uh stood back up which one this one here and this one here at the top of this round they both crept back up uh, with a glimmer of light in their eye uh, as they have done several times now um, and yeah other than that there has been the appearance of some local wildlife outside <laughs> outside remember, did we ever figure out what we can do to prevent the regen you had not come up with anything yeah all right not not uh, uh i don't i don't think you had really tried any kind of like okay here's a specific type of damage and let's see what this does type of thing uh, but so far, every time they've gone down, they've come back up at the top of a round here. Uh, also, at the uh, once all of you have finished your turns, these things have been uh, kind of morphing and having these weird visions of like dead uh, loved ones and things that you know uh, appear inside of their. Uh, shape-shifting skin if you will and it's been causing you all to have to uh, save from being uh, frightened right I believe frightened yes yeah frightened. Uh, without any further ado I think that's where we stood any questions no nope. all right top of this round is dread is silenced still yet yet silenced all right Figure how to get through this bunch of assholes and finally stab the head asshole to death. That is my plan to do because I'm right beside him. But if you do come, uh, I say come closer so that you can't do spells because he's pretty much blocked in there. So that leaves you vulnerable for all three attacks from the giants or the evil again. First thing I'm actually going to have to do is put that away. Oh, well, my friend, putting your dagger away will trigger reactions. Anything I do is going to trigger reactions. Yeah, true. Even drinking the potion. But, oh, uh, well, let's see. Really, the attack opportunities should be happening with the she's, yeah. just in case, because then well, stabs up the Sorry, technically with the movement, uh, 
you know, if the, with the movement measurement, this is 10 feet. So I'll give you a break and just this one flings out his chain when you sheathe your dagger. And yes, reactions are a one-off. So further, man <laughs> further manipulating actions wouldn't trigger more reactions, right? Uh, all right. So, well, that one doesn't apply because it's a Pathfinder one thing. Let's roll again. <clears throat> all right. Uh, he uh, flings out his chain but misses and the effort leaves him fatigued. Alright, so you drank a potion. Did you get the healing? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Alright, what next? Uh, for the last action... Last action, I draw that. All right. <coughs> Roll that recovery. All right, you staunch your bleeding. Uh, this guy right here uh, walks over to the window right here. And he just presses his chest up against it uh, to where his nipple is uncomfortably magnified right in front of your face. I reach out and rub it. Well, the window's still intact here, right? Yeah, I'll just rub the window. Okay. Uh, while you're distracted doing that, these birds come over here and peck. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they fucked off. They were going to, but this is funnier. <laughs> All right, so that they both swing at you once and pick. Holy shit! Just one of them hits you, though. All right, then the, now then successfully pecking, <laughs> they fuck off. All right, this fellow, uh, cautious of you, sir. Dur. Uh, let's see what he's gonna do. Oh man! Ooh, he is cautious of you, and he is going to attempt. Ooh, ooh, ooh! ooh. What will he do? Cry like a little girl, please. Perhaps. Uh, well, he steps cautiously away from you to get uh, a little bit of defense here from his conjured fellow, and he looks you dead in the eyes and begins to mutter foul utterances. Oh no, you said it was tougher for me. Um, so. Click that will save above where it do a plot check. Uh, I, I want to hero point that because I know what command is. Alright. Fuck. Jesus Christ, man. Alright, so on a critical failure, you must use all of your actions on your next turn to obey uh, the command that it gives you. 
Uh, and, I mean, you know what he's about to do, you think? And your fears are confirmed. He looks you right in the eyes and tells you on your turn to jump straight out that window. All right. All right, having exhausted his actions, we go to the flying man outside the window. All right. <coughs> This wall in here is still here. I'm, like I can't see him out of where Neji is. Uh, I believe we did say that wall was still so, there. Okay, well in that case, I'll cast level four invisibility. All right, on yourself. I'm guessing. Yeah. All right. Then I will. Looks like y'all's heroics is expired. Can you pull me into here? It won't let me cross the wall. Yeah. 20, 25, 30, 30, 40, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, uh, this guy here wastes no time and flicks out his chains. Is chain, chain, chains. But you are uh, well uh, ready for them, and only one makes a little bit of contact. But it stings a bit and leaves you bleeding somewhat. Uh, Sir Derwin? Goodbye. <laughs> Alright. Uh, you fall out the window. Uh, you okay. can't, you can't, oh, you can't use grab a ledge, grab an edge, or any kind of reaction because all three of your actions have to be used to jump out this window so you fall straight down eight floors uh which ends up giving you about 35 damage Oof. so you land at the bottom with 11 hp prone outside the tower laying on the sidewalk all right Amazingly, not unconscious. Just you guys at, in, uh, out, of, out of breath and bleeding. Ten apparently. turns. Bleeding, apparently. Oh, yes. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> command is vicious now. Uh, so, <laughs> as you're laying on the sidewalk, you bleed and fall unconscious. Oh, oh, yeah, okay, bye. I'm, I'm, I know I'm legit dead now. I have persistent damage, I am dead. You'll be alright. No. It's Not a public persistent. street, surely someone will see you and come to your aid. I'm okay having a new character. Because, uh, oh. I've, I've heard it too many times of uh, deaths of by persistent kill. Well, we shall see. Uh, I don't think this is true anymore. I don't think he was grabbing that thing. Alright, so what do you guys want Ninja to do? You guys don't have courage or heroics. I think it just expired this round. Wanted to do his, his thing? Yeah, he should probably reapply those. I assume someone shouted out when he jumped when he jumped off the edge and down to his death that he had leapt out of the window. 
Well, I mean, you all saw it happen. I guess I could see it from where I'm at. Okay. I mean, you know, he didn't do it quietly. Even though he was commanded to, he still, like, you know, rah, still, like, screamed, you know, like a bitch. <laughs> Uh, alright, so, so th this is successful, uh, regular successful, uh, boom, I'll give it to you even though you're laying on the ground, and you're probably more than 60 feet away, it's okay. Oh, you hear the lilting of the tunes as they waft out the window. Uh, all right. So I think that's just the one action, right, for the Inspire Courage. So he's got two remaining. You want a spell? Uh, so you guys see his probably, sheet or no? Yeah, he could he could hit this lower one with electric arc and have it jump to one of the others from where he's at, right? Because his lower wall is gone. Sure. Yeah. Uh. <clears throat> uh. Yeah. I mean that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want him to do that? Yeah, I don't see anything else he's got that it's going to really help right now. Oh, uh, one of them definitely doesn't save and gets zippity zapped. Uh, let's see. Which one was it? Let's see. Alright, that's this one. So he succeeded. She takes half. And falls dead. For the moment, at least. And then this one gets absolutely obliterated. Oh, I didn't do another one like that. Okay. So, he zaps them and they both fall down. Uh, oh, he's... How did he get out of initiative order? What I don't know how that happened. Alright, so, he got zapped down, they're both fallen, Drez, next round starts with you. Alright, my slowed should disappear now, right? Uh, yes, it disappears, well, technically last round it disappeared after it, after it worked its magic. Uh, hold on a second, let's see. Doom, alright. Uh, slowed, and that's down one. All right. All right. I am going to move here. All right, hold on. Let me move the bubble with you. All right. I'm going to use faint on cocksucker make goatee over here. <coughs> I don't think that's what he said his name was. I'm going to hero point that because fuck this entire goddamn fight. That's what fuck you, it, I'm going to stab what you the get. stupid son of a bitch. That's what you get. You're going to stab yourself. Whoopity fucking do. We can spend another three hours with this bastard. Rude AF. Alright. You do the deed. That's all I got. Alright. Roll to recover your bleed. Alright. Of course, because tonight the dice won't go above three. You bleed out. Uh, you notice that the two 
uh, guys, you have uh, your silence bubble around here. Don't seem to be getting back up. Perhaps related, perhaps not. Uh, this guy should be down one of that. Uh, <coughs> he's gonna step three. Uh, oh, excuse me. He's gonna go from one, two, three, like that, to the door. And then he's going to step down here to try to protect his master. And pulling a chain. <coughs> However, he misses wide. This fella's dead. This fella here. Uh... <coughs> Steps. Is this? I don't think this door is still here. Uh, he steps away from you. <coughs> into yeah, this. I think that entire wall came down. Yeah. He steps into this hallway. Uh, just outside of your effect, I believe. Yeah, just outside of your effect. And you see him begin to speak. And you are bracing yourself for what can only be something horrible. However, when he gets done talking, you see a little slip of energy form in front of him and expand into a doorway that he steps through and vanishes. So he dimension door somewhere. Yet. Yeah, well, if we only got the one guy left, I will first action chug a quick healing potion. Cast lightning bolt down the hallway. God damn, how do I rotate these lines again? I think you hold shift. Or all one or the other. <coughs> Shift. Shift? Oh, yeah. I didn't do it for me. Shift and the scroll wheel. Ah. Yeah. Alright, so you obliterate this thing with a powerful lightning bolt that it does not even come close to dodging. And the smell of burnt flesh is all that remains in this tower. Uh, so, there were, they're not represented because, you know, it's unofficial and I didn't just clog the map up f for lag's sake, uh, but there are uh, a bunch of folks, you know, there were folks being like actively tortured in here and there were a bunch of other, um, uh, you know, resistance people uh held prisoner and also other people that were just being enslaved straight up um so you probably want to go and question them and or look around in this room where the you know big bad guy was uh <coughs> sir derwin you come to uh barely conscious uh you are out on the street uh, a crowd has formed around you wondering if you are, you know, okay or not. Uh, let's see. Uh, what, what are you doing down here? What do you tell these fine folks? 
Uh, there's some danger up there. Please step back. And then I start charging it back in there and yell for high berry. For what? For high berry. It, it's for, from a podcast. Who's more prepared? Take the next twenty-five turns climbing the stairs. Don't yep. trip oh, on yeah. your way up, because I mean, like any more damage, and you're probably dead. Oh, I'm laying on hands myself. No, I was gonna say <laughs> whatever you do, do not try to heal yourself. Snap yeah, your own one, neck. Yeah, not one yourself and die. Oh no, lay on hands is an instant heal. Okay. Can't fuck that up. <laughs> well, first thing I'm gonna do then is search the room where the boss man was. See if I can't find some cool spell stuff. Oh, I guess first thing I'm gonna do is a wretch. Get rid of my sick and condition. Uh, you're not sick. I was. Oh. One of the things last week. I think that oh, was the no. other game, though. No, I, I, it had the condition on me until I just clicked the. Remember off. how filthy, nasty the birds were. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, so you look around and you don't see anything in your invisible state. Uh, your vision is kind of blurry. Because it it's, 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 it's so bright in here. Could we take 20 in this room? What do you mean? Like stop and rest? Well, there's like the, act, well, there's the action of take 20. It means you uh, look long enough that it's the equivalent of rolling a uh, natural 20. Uh, no. No? Is that not a thing in 2E? Don't think so. Fuck. Okay, well then I will... drink a healing potion. I mean, you could have just rolled it in secret like it's supposed to be, and then I could have fucking said oh. you found it, and oh, you wouldn't have had to know that your roll sucked, dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was even worse. <laughs> well, quickly drink a potion. Well, because you guys are level 10, right? So, like, on level DC for you guys is 27. Right? So an easy one's 25, right? Etc. and so forth. Oh, uh, while you're bubbling and fumbling around the room, however, uh, your rogue companion comes up behind you and points out that in his haste, this dude seems to have left behind a few items of importance to you all. And you find a odd book written in Infernal. That I don't believe any of you can decipher at the moment. Uh, you also find uh, the typical manacles you've been seeing on these Scarlet Triad folks, but these seem to be imbued with uh, good energy for like capturing you know demons or something perhaps or some other kind of evil thing susceptible to good vibes uh, and you find a like a skeleton key master key that opens all of the doors in the tower here and all of the slave manacles that everyone has I feel like those manacles would be good for Derwin to have. Alright. I can stick that extra planar registry in the bag of holding until we find somebody that can read it. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, at the door of this room, a young woman kind of timidly sticks her head out uh, and asks if it is safe uh, to leave, to exit, and if you have come as part of, you know, the resistance force here. I tell her that, yes, we are working for the resistance against the uh, uh, the Imperial Remnant uh, First she, Order. She holds up her manacles and asks you to you know, let her loose and she can uh, help you organize the escape effort here. Use my elite thievery skills to put a key in the lock and turn it. Uh, she rubs her wrists as they clank to the floor and she looks at you endearingly and thanks you. Um, she kind of shakes her head and she says that, you know, most people here have the same story. Uh, they were either uh, answering a uh, advertisement for work or they were otherwise, you know, just walking along the streets of Kentargo in the evening under the cover of darkness and they were absconded with and brought to this place um uh, you know all of them have the same stories of you know being gone for days and weeks and uh some family members being taken away and separated from them uh, throughout all these stories you start to hear over and over a mention of a place called uh, the quarry uh, and you think that you should ask her more about the quarry and tell and, me more about the quarry and or you all perhaps know something about the quarry and would like to recall your knowledge of society Uh, so, your resident sorcerer here, uh, recalls that there are many quarries in Ravenel, but, uh, one above them all to the south, uh, is a little bit more prominent than the others because it is owned, uh, by a, uh, quite prominent family. Um... And so, considering this information, you all ask this lady if it is, in fact, Summershade Granite Quarry in White Rock. Uh, and she looks up at you almost stunned, as if she, you know, suspects you might be Scarlet Triad agents. But she just confirms what you've said, that yes, it is. And she asks you if you know it. What do you tell her? For me? A any of you? Yes, we know it well. She says, oh good, so I don't have to <laughs> tell you where it is. I say, no, I don't know where it is. Could you tell us more? Uh, so, she begins to tell you that it would probably be a good idea for you to go south uh, to investigate. Um, she looks around and finds a scrap piece of parchment lying around and begins to scribble with some equally pur purloined ink. Uh, a letter of introduction. She tells you that uh, she happens to know the Baron of White Rock. And if you take this letter there, she is sure that um, you, know, you will be favorably greeted. 
she continues to tell you that you know you have nothing to worry about here that she she vows to get all these people home safely she kind of looks around as everyone's gathering over here around Neji they've never seen a goblin before so they're all poking and prodding at him uh, they eventually strip all of his clothes away and reveal that he is only wearing like a banana thong you guys are shocked at his choice of undergarment. I'm not that shocked. <laughs> uh, so, she also gives you all a solemn vow that she will work with the you know rest of the resistance here to route the remaining Scarlet Triad agents here in, Kent in Kentargo. Uh, but she believes that you know you all have dealt the the main blow here that the, this wizard was their main you know administrator in the region and with him gone uh, it seems that they will be able to you know route out the few little local local thugs that kind of took up with them um, she scratches out a little bit of a map and shows you the exact location of where you need to go um she with that she kind of looks at you expectantly as if you know waiting for you to say something back to her about all of this turn of events i ask her if she knows who the douche with the goatee was uh she tells you she never heard his full name properly uh but she heard them calling him uh Varishma. She doesn't know if that was a name or a title. Um, and she oftentimes heard him speaking in languages, you know, she she didn't quite understand. Um, however, uh, she is pretty confident that, you know, for all of his trappings of, you know, speaking infernal languages, that he is just a human um, but she's certain that he's not, you know, not from Ravenel, not from Kentargo. She's never seen him before. Ask her if she knows anybody who knows how to read Infernal. You ask her if she knows anyone that reads Infernal? Yeah. Uh, she kind of, uh, she kind of furls her nose at this and is like Ugh, no why why would anyone want to do that we found this book in that asshole's chest I just figured it might help us to know what it says uh, she tells you no she, she can't help you with that uh, but she tells you that um, she did manage to pocket this and she holds out uh, a little dangling thing on a chain that you recognize as let's see here uh, let me put it in the chat do I have her select where's she at yeah. uh, one of these and she holds it out and offers it to uh, to you, Dress. And I will take it from her, but Foundry is telling me I don't have permission to do what it actually is. Well, yeah, oh, really? That's interesting. Oh, I guess because I would have to, uh, there you go. Now I think we can if we do it this way. Ooh. There you go. There we go. Alright, so yeah, she hands that to you. Hands. Uh, and tells you that she stole it from that dude. Nice. Uh, she asks you if you found anything else among his belongings. There was a key that should unlock pretty much everything up here. 
Uh, she asks you if she can have it to assist in getting everyone out. Yeah, I believe Derwin has it at the moment. Yes, I do, and I will give it to her. Do you want to give it to her, or do you want to just go around and open everything? Uh, no, I'll give it to her. Alright. And is that all you're telling her about? Uh, yeah. Is that a unanimous decision? I mean, the only other thing was those manacles. You can tell her about her, about it if you want to. You're not gonna tell her about the book. I already told her about the book. Well, you just asked her if she knew anybody that could read it for her. And I told her it was because I found the book in his stuff. Mm, I don't know if you said that. I did. I, I distinctly I, remember saying it. Yeah. Uh, well, she advises you that you should probably turn that book over to the Silver Council. Um, that they would be able to dispose of it. <coughs> for you that if it's that if it's written in infernal it must be chalaxian with well, infernal is is that like a religious reading that we could use like that religion check that that item just gave you to decipher the writings or is that not the same thing i mean one of us would have to be able to read that language gotcha but you know i would assume somewhere someone can read it for us if we really want to know what's in it. It's also worth 1,500 gold. Well, at the very least, then, let's just sell it to somebody. I just yeah. don't want to sell it in case it's got, like, crucial information inside of it, you know? Well, like, yeah, she, like, she is asking you right now to turn it over to the Silver Council. Uh, I'm gonna say, you know, if it was in this guy's trunk, it might be kind of important to know what it actually says. I don't think giving it away to be destroyed right away is the smart move. Is there anybody on the Silver Council that might be willing to translate it and well, actually tell us what is, it says? Okay. Well, so she doesn't, she's not on the Silver Council. She's just saying give it to them to destroy it because she doesn't know what it is. Well, and she's an idiot. She, she doesn't know what they're going to do with it. Nobody can knows. Can she what tell us doing. where to find the Silver Council? Well, the Silver Council is the administrative body that runs Kentaurian. Well, let's just keep it and then see if we can find someone somewhere that can. And translate for us. Yeah, we'll okay. hold on to it for now. Okay. Uh, she seems very disappointed with your choice, uh, but is busy carrying on with uh, rescuing all these folks and bids you adieu and tells you that uh, you should head with all haste to White Rock to the south that from there you should be able to determine the quarry's exact location and uh, once you have spoken to her uh, contact there uh, who she has told you is the Baron of White Rock name of Canton Jaltero and that Jalteros are the family that they were speaking of earlier. Uh, so, she gathers up everyone and they ten cautiously, tentatively head down the stairs. Cautiously, I should say. Head down the stairs and away and out of sight. And you all are alone up here in this broken up dormitory level. Do you have any last business to attend? So I know she said to make haste 
to the quarry, how uh, how hasty do we really need to be? Uh, like, is well, it like wizard, the entire world's going to end, or? Well, a wizard just that you were attacking just left the battle, and you don't know where he went. So that's your level of haste, I guess, determined by you and everybody else. I mean, I'm just. I mean, I, I know we talked about this like a month ago, but you know, I've got. A need to upgrade my rake fear to greater striking and I've got a greater shadow rune here for my armor it'd be great to have time to put those on but if they're going to destroy all civilization while we wait to do that then I'll just have to wait till later I, I want to do that stuff with you but let's go to the quarry and then say we have to be back we have to upgrade we are not powerful enough I don't want the other side of this every time, but I have zero fifth level spells and a couple of fourths. Oh, it's we're like, talking about redoing armors that will take days. Yeah. Well, even just going there right now is going to be... Yeah, I mean, we'll definitely oh, have to exactly. rest before we can go to there at the very least. Yeah. But we should get out here first before we do that rest. Okay, so I I meant more like right here in this room. Is there anything you want to? Do? <laughs> well, yes, we want to have the conversation about what we want to do. Uh, I, I want Nechi to use his suit on his fourth level suit suit but, on me. But but so what? And, to, hold on and, to to answer the question more seriously. Uh, the the you could you can always do whatever you want i mean if you it if you take time to you know like like Derwin was saying i mean if you're gonna do armors and and swords and all that kind of stuff i mean you guys are gonna have to i, I don't even know how you can manage that right because your dude is is fucking uh is uh Teo's guy, right? All the way back in the whatever. And Cantargo, I don't know what level of city Cantargo is. It's probably high enough, but that just means it's going to fucking cost. You know what I mean? You're going to have to pay this guy to do it. It's going to cost you more, right? Which sucks. Uh, but then there's the like time factor too, right? Running the days off the clock. You yep. can You can do it. Of course you can do it. But you know think about it practically right if you just fought somebody and they ran away and then you give them two weeks to prepare that's probably not great for you etc and so forth so you know just all yeah, things like all things considered also assuming through that, that that wizard went to that place the longer we wait the more healthy is going to get back to right? sure Right, obviously, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it takes you guys what twenty minutes to heal the fool. I mean, you don't think it takes him twenty minutes to heal the fool, right? Yeah. But like, also, uh, you know, going all the way back to where Teo's dude is is a is a proposition. And we haven't, I guess, we haven't talked about doing the like Baldur's Gate type deal where everybody's in camp but of course he's supposed to be overseeing the citadel right so yeah. that it's not just getting fucked up by goblins and shit so I'm not saying you know you can't I'm just saying you just, the answer to that question is yes but there's always the like practical implications of that right it's not just you do it it's okay it takes this amount of time and this is what also is happening you know like say back in the day right they used to be really meticulous about the time because of course your character was aging and shit and all that yeah. too so yeah, like there's a cost to everything basically basically yeah. you know, right? so with that uh as you guys set foot back into uh hold on here let me click the right button as you guys head back into the streets of Cantargo to further aggravate you, 
Uh, you all level up to level 11. So suck all that. I'm going to go get something to drink. Figure, fi it. figure your shit out. <laughs> for a new character at level 11? New character? What do you mean you're still alive? I, I know that. But I will say, if I did do that fall and I had persistent damage, I should have died. Like, if we're playing rules as written, right? Well, but let's not worry about it, because if we get into yeah. it, if we, I, I, I know we, that. I that way either, right? Yeah. I, I mean, why, why, I just, why do you, why are you so set uh, on, like, being unconscious with persistent damage is death? Uh, you could have recovered it. We just didn't play it out because combat ended. I've read and heard multiple times where persistent damage will just deplete you. Cause once you go up, you automatically get that uh, bleed damage break back. Like even if you stabilize, the, the bleed damage comes back. And puts you down again, and then you go to... You know, to Wounded too. And... Apparently, it's the most common way for characters to die, and two E is persistent damage and getting knocked down to zero. I mean, I guess if you had multiple persistent damages, but you had one bleed. That was, I mean, the bleed is what knocked you down the first time, but then. Like, like if you play it out, or you could, if you, even if you stabilized. The bleed damage would then tick again and knock him down to dying again with wounded two. But he would why why so why doesn't he get a check to recover from any of it? I mean that's what that's the dis it would have been my did you do it all that what was it again? Like when you're unconscious I don't believe you get a save to stop the bleeding. No. Well he would you would have got a dying save to co to come back up a weight before that. Well, the but, dying save just stabilizes you, right? Right. You wouldn't actually wake up, and then the bleed damage would put you back down to dying again. And then the, Unless you saved it, again. so you'd have to save both of them, right? But calm. You can't even you can't stay you can't uh, save a, a bleed damage when you're unconscious. Mm hmm. But combat ended is what stopped all yeah. that. It, it well, should have never ended if I had bleed damage. So I would still have to keep taking that bleed damage. I mean, That's okay, for, then we would have to change how we've played for well, the well, past yeah. year. Because <laughs> we've never played that any of persistent stuff is like really kept going after combat. We just wiped everything. Well, no, when, mag when you're magically healed, bleed stops immediately, right? So as soon as someone soothes their tight lays on hands then the bleed is healed or whatever doesn't, doesn't really matter yeah oh well, when you're trying to kill yourself here just let it go yeah i'm just saying combat ended before it even got back to your turn so like i did like we've done in every combat is that you just get get up and it's combat is over so like you're able to, you know, staunch bleeding and all that kind of thing. Boom, boom, boom. Like that's how we've, that's how we've been playing for a year. <laughs> so, I'm gonna go get something to drink, and everybody's level 11. So I don't even get your pathfinder sheets and so in this part this is where it gets choppy because i don't have an edgy shit so i don't know how you want to continue without him or just continue with him at level 10 like he was i don't think it'll make too big of a difference i mean you know it's not like he's main damage or something you know what i mean mm -hmm. all right i'll be right back
<laughs> y'all got can y'all do the pathfinder thing or y'all can just add some I've added it I don't trust that path muncher anymore ever yeah. since it wiped wiped out uh, all my inventory on outlaw I'll mm -hmm. import it in there but I'll do the leveling up manually yeah I mean I think once you once you're going right one, yeah, one but, levels. I remember. Bad. I think it's that, only good if you're doing it like initial setup. Yeah. Yeah. But I also remember that character was on a uh, oracle top on the the whole page was on an oracle class, and I changed it to the Magus, and it was all messy. So I would always have to when we leveled up always change a whole bunch of stuff trying to level up hmm. well so uh so while you guys decide what to do i assume you go back to a friendly place like the coffee house here yeah and kick back and chill all right well as you do and you get reports that um the Scarlet Triad is indeed being routed out of the rest of Kentargo. And you hear a familiar name mentioned. The name Laslin. And you remember that this is a name you've heard since your first arrivals in Breach Hill. Uh, and that this is the person that was working with Boz Lorraine. And... You have heard reports that this is, in fact, the person overseeing operations in the quarry to the south. Uh, it has not been very long. It's only the evening of the same day here. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, so, have you decided upon a plan of what you want to do are you going to stay here for a while and try to get some arms and armament upgraded or fashioned and or what you going to do pretty sure we're going to rest and go to the quarry okay so you're just going to rest eight hours till the morning you up but on the other note but do we want an upgrade? So I would be okay with upgrading. Uh, the problem is it's going to take us forever, and then we're going to get out there and have an even harder fight on our hands. Well, I mean, so look, let me, let's me let pause for a moment so time's not running. Because, I mean, we're not, look, we're not like super sticklers about all this shit. So let's just, let's, let's just get an idea so you know what you're working with. What, first of all, who alls want to do what generally? So Drez said, "What? Say, say, say it again for me." All right, striking rune on my rapier upgraded to greater striking rune. Okay, so striking rune to greater striking. Yes. And then I've got a completely separate greater shadow rune that would, I guess, need to be swapped on my armor for the regular shadow rune. 
so greater to chrome ring okay and that's it yeah who else i want to repair my shield so you want to repair is it totally broken uh yep what shield is it the dragon Sl slayer shield red dragon slayer shield red okay what else uh, not gonna lie, I haven't really looked too much more into it. Vega? Or is it. Yeah. Sarega? <laughs> uh, I'm pretty good other than I want to rest. Okay. So. Uh. Give me a moment here. And let me do some figuring. Uh, let's see. Just a moment. I'll put you on hold. Oh, I guess I'd like to buy 20 arrows. That's it. How you dare you? How dare you? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Alright, hold on. Yeah, just regular arrows. We yeah, can... regular arrows and two moderate healing potions. Alright, we'll handle that. Uh, so. <coughs> You're striking. So. You, your greater striking rune is something and did you loot one somewhere no and once you once you've got a striking rune on a weapon you can upgrade it to greater and then whatever the top level is without having to buy a new rune yeah but so the greater is not something that uh it's like out of bounds of the items that we've like been allowing you guys to have. it's like one level above you so like next level would be something that I'll let you do like if we so you may not recall we had this kind of like a month or two after we started playing and we realized that like having items way higher level than us was bad i mean this would probably not be like totally devastating but it's like just before when you should be able to have this all right well i've got the greater shadow room can we do that what is it also 12 or is it lower uh i don't know it doesn't show me here in the inventory let me see what the compendium says i think it's nine yeah so you can do that one for sure so hold on let's see and actually while i'm thinking about it i've also got and and my... well it just sorry but so what you said is true like i would let you just like upgrade it but it's still it's level twenty. Like your striking room. Gotcha. Because that is what it says. All right. So let me let me ask you this real quick because this may change some calculations. All right. I'm wearing plus one shadow leather armor. But in my bag, I've also got plus one resilient leather armor. Would it be? faster just to add that greater shadow rune to the resilient leather armor than swapping it on the armor I'm actually wearing I don't I think it'd be the, like are you saying as far as time wise or cost wise I think they're both time, the same time wise because you know I'd, I'd want a resilient rune too but it seems like it'd be faster just to slap that greater shadow on well, the one that's already got resilient Right. Well, and so 
I mean, the, the, I guess the answer is this, right? And so it's a level 9 item. And so let's see here. Do, 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 do. Uh, it's going to be... I think it's just because so the time etch in and, and so let me back up so we've always done this like at the end of sessions or whatever kind of or like when there's a lull and we haven't really fucked around with the time so much i think we did that one time we were doing a bunch of repairs and shit too and then y'all left out and there wasn't a big deal about leaving like two weeks whatever because there wasn't like an enemy in play right so you're supposed to like spend the same amount of time it would take you to craft it like doing it yes yeah and then so that baseline is like four days and then when you roll your crafting checks like normally if you're just crafting something it just reduces like the materials and shit but in etching like if you get a crit it reduces the cost right i think it i think it's free if you crit actually but so i mean your time here is essentially like four days is what we're talking about now your repair is a little different uh your repair is what's the it's a the red shield what level is it do you have it open right there in front of you uh I will in two seconds. It is find it right there. It is a level nine. Okay, so uh, that's I mean not very difficult, I guess ish. So uh, it's it it it's it, that that's just minutes to repair something. Is what I'm getting okay. at. Okay. Yeah, Ten minutes. Uh. And it's a level nine, so yeah, so it'd be like a twenty six DC crafting. And I mean you'd have to pay somebody, like a trained guy or whatever, and he's gonna charge yeah. you like, you know, probably like half the cost of the shield, so uh, just Actually here's here's an idea. Since this shadow room that I've got is not gonna be going on the armor that I'm currently wearing. Can I just say I drop it and the armor I need it on off with the crafter and we go and take care of business and I come pick it up later? Yeah, 100%. Because that would, that would yeah. you know, get it done and have it out of the way and we can go on to the quarry. Yeah, and this is the greater one and the what kind of armor you had, the extra armor you had? Yeah, in my bag of holding there's a plus one resilient leather armor. And just slap the shadow grater onto that. Uh, yeah. I mean, you can totally do that. 100%. Let's do that then, because it kind of. Uh, where's that room? Let me see. Oh, shit. It should be in my equipment area. So many fucking keys. Uh,. Just look it up in the companion. <clears throat> uh, so you already got it, so it's when you get back you're gonna owe him uh three hundred and twenty five, I believe. Okay. I mean I can pay up front if that's easier. Well, you're gonna wanna make sure he successfully did it, I think, right? True. And didn't break up break all your shit. Alright, so you leave him that shit? And you guys rest, what, eight hours? Uh, yeah. And you want to repair your shield, yes? Yeah. So this guy's going to charge you 
uh, the same guy that's doing this armor work for uh, Drez is wanting to charge you the same price. He's wanting to charge you uh, 325 and he guarantees success. Sure. Uh, I will also talk to him about when I come back for getting a rune on my weapon. But I'll be later because I want my weapon with me. He I says thanks for the warning. <laughs> Alright, so uh, let's see. This guy uh, takes your shield from you. And let's see. Ba -ba 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 -boom. He's got a guaranteed success here at 325. Do you want to uh, tip him or anything to, you know, sweeten the pot? I give him uh, five extra gold coins. Even five extra gold coins. Yeah. All right. He he winks at you. <laughs> uh, and he is able with his skill to restore thirty HP to your shield. Uh, let's see. What is this? Hardness is. Oh, where's the uh, thing for broken? Why is that not clicking? Oh, because I have to. Here we go. Alright, I'm gonna fix the way he. his uh, account for his legendary like this. Oh, I can't change it because it's you. Hold on. I'm gonna do it like this. Alright, there you go. So, he was able to restore 30 HP back to your shield. And it is otherwise in uh, good condition. Boom. And he deducts 330 gold from you. Alright, any other business? Or just resting. Arrows. You're buying how many? 30. Yeah, 30 arrows. And, and potions. Two, two uh, water healing potions. Alright. Do you check them any kind of way before you... Like when you buy them? Potions or the arrows? Either one. Sure, I'll do a Wait, arcana check this. just to make sure that the healing potions are legit. Uh, and what kind of potions you said? Greater. Yeah. If we can get greater, I'll get greater. I think moderate was the highest we could take at level 10. I can check for a moment. Yeah, they're 12. Almost. There's moderate then. They're dangling them. How many you said? Three? Yeah, let's do three. They're 50 apiece. You got one. Three. All right. I, I guess I'll take 
Oh, I'd we'll also like to sell my ruby and sapphire ring for an extra hundred gold. Well, you got a shitload of, I mean, that silver's, uh, yeah, six, is it, it's a hundred to one, right? Ten to one? Well then yeah, that'd be sixty gold. 60 gold. Yeah. yeah, okay. If I can do it without selling the ring, I'll just do that. Uh well if you get three it's a hundred and fifty. So if that's, you know, sixty, then you'd yeah, need I've got one fifty in my Yeah, one fifty gold already, I just need to cover the arrows, that's all. Well that's just thirty silver. Do that then. Three and you could do them. you could do copper. Sure. Uh, oh what? Let, let's sit here we do this. Uh so there it did it for me. There's a button you can click where it just takes the value, not a specific coin. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. That's handy. Mm-hmm. So it crunched down all the copper and all the silver. Yeah. All right. Somebody's going to steal your sneakers. All right, so uh, how long are you guys resting? Eight hours? Yep. So that if you just do eight hours, that puts you uh, leaving early, early in the morning here. Uh, you have to go 50 miles south. That's where White Rock is. Uh, there are, you have found, or been told, two ways to go this route south. Uh, there is a road. It's very well known. It's called the Silver Road. Uh, it leads right to it. You could also venture down the river. The Yo Yolublis River. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's not a polluted, you know, city infested river. It's kind of rustic and, you know, you can laze down it on a, on like a John boat kind of a thing. Um, uh, there's a lot of farms and ranches along like the countryside between here and there. Um... How do you wish to try to proceed? The river's probably fastest as long as we don't, you know, flip a boat. I do like boat. Alright. What you, what's your plan to get a boat at this hour? I'm good at feeling stuff. Go down to the docks. I use a void notice. Take a look around to see if there are any potential unguarded boats. Alright. Let's see a, a perceptive check. Um, you see one boat unmoored or at least you know moored loosely uh, seems to be phallic shaped like dick and two balls or what are we talking about here I just no just like very long elongated and then like wood carved at the uh, you know decoratively someone had their boat carved in the shape of a dick seems to be the case is anybody guarding the boat 
Not that you could tell. Uh, you could look for another boat. Or take this boat. Do you guys want the dick boat or do you want something different? Let's go, Johnson. Alright, I'm going to attempt to steal the dick boat. Okay. Um, <coughs> you sneak aboard and... I mean, there's there's no one around. You're able to get right on it and untie it. Your companions follow you. Oh yes, yeah. so I'm running down, and I don't want to say I'm. Oh no, sorry, I'm not getting guard. All right, there are uh, some oars tucked into the boat that you all can retrieve and start moving. Yep. What are they shaped like? Well, you haven't picked them up yet. I'm going to inspect the dick boat oars. Uh, as you look over them, you run your hands over them in the dark, and you instinctively know exactly what they are carved in the shape of uh, the the bottom of it is just I mean it's an ore it's not really anything special uh, but as it comes up to the point you know where you're holding it uh, it is carved in the distinctive shape of a young orc's torso very muscularly early. All right, I hand the oars to Derwin and Vega and tell them to get busy. I say Neji. Uh, Neji is just lounging in the back of the boat. Uh, I mean, Neji and Derwin, you guys can order for a row. So, somehow he has a drink, uh, still just wearing the thong. He's just lounging, drinking his drink. Uh, he informs all of you that uh, he has been on this boat before. <laughs> that uh, at one point when you had a few minutes of downtime, uh, he found this tour of Kentargo's, shall we say, pleasure establishments. <laughs> and he... Uh, took it three times yeah I bet he did so you're off <laughs> yeah we're off alright you slip away in the dark of night out into the greater wider river and uh, you know, it's not long before. Wait, let's see. Let me fix this map. Duke, Duke. There we go. Um, it's not long before dawn approaches. And you're all turned to stone. No. So, you were up here. Kentargo. And then you boarded and were able to enter the river and you slip on down the river. As you do so, you notice that, in fact, yes, there are just rolling countrysides, farms. And, um, the further you get away from the city, however, the more inconspicuous your vessel seems uh, and you start to generate a bit of a crowd what do you want to do about this uh, 
we're going to like they're like they're following you down the river bank like they're all riding horses and running after you and more and more people are joining in the further you seem to be going down the river here and you you see it becoming an issue we're going to need to get off the river and go on foot uh, okay so what do you what is your plan whereabouts are we right now uh, well, it's been about, uh, let's see, you'd be about to this bend right here. Okay, and where's our destination? Uh, you have it marked roughly on your map around here. So you're about, you know, yeah, a little over a third maybe. In the way. All right, so I say we uh, just pull over to the bank and get out is there a road nearby or are we just going to cut, cut across oh cut yeah this country? the silver road runs down along the river pretty much okay yeah so i say we get out of the boats get on the road all right uh, as you pull the boat over and land it uh, kind of burly looking dude says you ain't plan on leaving that there are you where the fuck else am I supposed to leave it oh shit are you saying that intimidatingly you're goddamn right <sighs> okay uh can you open your sheet and roll on yeah with a hat uh, okay, so you are able to dissuade this fellow through intimidation uh, that this is, in fact, where you will be leaving this peculiar vessel. And you guys saunter off to the Silver Road and proceed on foot. Uh, so, let's see. Let me get, let's, let me get a distance calculator here. tell you how long it takes <clears throat> uh, the boat was definitely faster so uh, you guys walk on down the road and you find that five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, and it takes you the better part of twelve hours to eventually walk all the way to your destination. Uh, you get there without incident, and when you arrive. Uh, you find uh, not at all what you left a very small town instead of a large you know kind of uh, bustling city uh, you don't really strike up any notice because there seems to be quite a bit of you know travel through the town um, as you step on in and walk into the you know place you see a lot of people doing business uh, restaurants open uh, travelers leaving travelers arriving um, sort of taking over the skyline of the town is a pretty opulent looking manor uh, it looks like a, a hunting lodge up on the northwest side of town but it is like towering over any of the other uh, buildings and is seems to be in at least better condition but everything here needs some kind of repair it seems like um, again there's a few guards standing around but they don't seem to be particularly concerned with you guys there's a lot of different strange looking folks like say coming and going horses buggies things of that nature um, 
what will you do as you approach? <laughs> uh, let's see. Our contact is the Duke, right? Is that what you said? The Baron. The Baron. <clears throat> the Baron, yeah. Most likely living in that big old mansion you said was hanging over the town, right? I'd say that's probably a fair guess. Let's head in that direction. Yeah. Tomorrow. Uh, so as you head northwest through town, again, you you don't really strike up too much of a notice, but it, you're getting further away from the like main fur, thoroughfare. You see less and less, you know, like people out in the streets, and you know it's becoming more like residential. Um, you did notice that as you you know came further into town, that you passed two taverns which you thought was pretty excessive for such a small town. Uh, as you wind up kind of a, a little bit of an elevated road here to get to this hunting lodge in the northwest, uh, you notice a man repairing uh, some of the, the, the uh, you know, fortifications uh, just outside of the entrance to this place. Uh, as you approach, he kind of turns and greets you uh, and asks you, you know, like, how can I help you? That kind of a thing. Tell him we need an audience with the bear. With the baron, you said? Yeah, uh, we... Sorry. You say what? We what? We have a letter to see the Baron. Do we not? We got it from that girl? Do we? Yes. Oh, hey. I don't know. Was that a statement or a question? <laughs> Try to make it a statement. I'm just not 100% sure on myself that I we did it. Alright. Um, so, he kind of laughs smugly uh, and tells you that you have one. What, what do you... What's your business? What do you need? I tell him that we are here on behalf of the Bellflower Network that we think that there are slaver operations going on in the quarry. Is that it? Yeah, let's start with that. Alright, uh, he listens intently to you, uh, having fully stopped what he was doing. Uh, however, when you finish, he chuckles, and then turns into a full bellow uh, and he tells you that you must have been listening to Loria and he explains that the Summershade Quarry has been closed for a decade that his family gave it up uh, you know once it became depleted and that beyond that they still send a few guards over to watch the site in shifts of a few months at a time um, and he just kind of, you know, he's just kind of scoffing, scoffingly mocking, uh, your letter, assuming you, you handed it to him at this point. Sure. Yeah. What is this guy's name? Is this the dude that, fuck, I knew I should have wrote that name down. Canton. Jaltero. Canton. Yeah. You got the right guy, he's just not being any help. Yeah, well, as he's, you know, laughing and mocking you, he's, you know, he's taking the letter from you, and he's looking more at it, and he's reading what she's actually written. And he slowly starts to, you know, die down his laughter... And he looks at you, 
and he asks you if this is true, if you have in fact seen Scarlet Triad slavers taking people. Uh, I've seen yes. a shit ton of them. Uh, I throw down one of many pairs of my manacles right down to his feet. They all say Scarlet Triad. Alright, he is shocked at this. Uh, and he's almost in disbelief of it, but he tells you that, uh, you know, as long as it doesn't cost him anything, it potentially protects, you know, the people in this town. Um, he'll, you know, go ahead and give you the exact location here and answer any questions you might have about, uh, you know, the quarry or the route into it. Um, he tells you that, um, you know, he just can't believe that any of this is true. Uh, but if it is, he wants you to, you know, eradicate anyone who's taken up in this quarry. I let him know that we, uh, my mother always told me if you're good at something, never do it for free. If we clear this quarry out, we, we will expect some payment. Uh, he looks at you kind of confused because he's, you know, you've, you've come to him telling him about all the Scarlet Tribe motherfuckers you've already defeated and shit. Fair enough. And he's like, why, why, why am I footing the bill now all of a sudden? I asked him to tell me about the approach to the quarry. Specifically, are there any places where there might be an ambush set up? He says... Yeah, right here, and stabbed you. No. <laughs> Strike him with my hammer. <laughs> Might evil. Uh, no, he begins to tell you, um, you know, more about it. That it is, uh, you know, obviously connected to a mountain with the same name, Summershade Mountain. Uh, he tells you it was once, like, a very significant source of granite for all the buildings in this region. White Rock and Cantargo especially. Um, but again, it closed about a decade ago. Uh, you know, the production started to decline. And so they didn't want to lose any more money. And they uh, they just shut it down. Um, he kind of seems a little, you know, dodgy about this fact. Uh, he tells you, you know, the last time he was there... Everything was just all, you know, boarded up, buttoned up. Uh, that, as far as he knew, it had all been like flooded out once they had, you know, gotten rid of it. So he doesn't know how the Scarlet Triad folks would be, you know, using it. Uh, but he would he explains to you roughly how it's laid out. Uh, and as he explains it, it's, it seems more like a like a mine than a quarry because he describes like levels going in uh, that are not necessarily like on the same like level like go down right so he explains that there was like dormitories and a sluice floor and everything you would expect in like a mining operation but again that when they closed it they uh they flooded it all out so if the scarlet triad had you know, have taken it over. He's he's kind of hesitant to say what what means they used to make it habitable again. Ask him if he knows of any other you know, back way in through the river if it got flooded out or how. Curious how it got flooded out, and if we can 
somehow use that to get uh, w Well, he showed, he had, it, as doing this, he, in doing this, he showed you that they're explained to you, like, the approach to it is, you know, just a, a mount, dirt, dirt and mountain path, and that there's, you know, of course, obvious places you could, like, be ambushed in trees and all this kind of things. You can't really say, you know, where there might be this or that. Uh, but as far as like other entrances, uh, you know, to the best of his knowledge, they were all blocked up. Um, and he, you know, this was over a decade ago. So that he said the landscape just, you know, nature just took it back over. All right. Well, I'm out of ideas. Let's just march on off that way, I guess. Yes. How far is it from here? Oh, not far at all. I mean, within a day's, you know. A day's, uh, you know, walk or hike or whatnot. I mean, we've just been on the road for 12 hours. We're probably going to need to rest, right? I mean, you probably are tired, you know. Short ask rest. Me, ask me if we can rest here. Oh, yeah. He offers you uh, lodgings in his place if you'd like it. Where do you take it? Okay, so you all go into his hunting lodge? Yep. Alright, he walks back in. Butt naked. I've been playing Baldur's Gate 3, y'all. No. <laughs> I roll for seduction. Uh, no, you, he uh, points you in and you walk in and there's, uh, you know, kind of a uh, nondescript person there helper who shows you in and you find that while the outside looks like a very you know well to do kind of place the inside is in a bit of disrepair but decent enough you've stayed in worse places like Derwin's mom's house uh, and you all have a, a kind of a common room where you can all hang out and sleep and rest Of course, my mom's place was horrible. If she had a whole hoard of gold. So, as you are preparing to rest, anything you're doing here? I will uh, take this time to prepare a new spell into my robes. Okay. I'll let you know what that spell is some other time. Keep it for flavor. Okay. Can you, uh, you have, can you drop it on it or something? Uh, no. Because well, I do, I do believe you're supposed to, you know, declare what it is when you prepare it, right? Yeah. Well, break the, uh, the secret. Well, can you surprise. just, well, can you just, like, DM me so I know you're not a lying, cheating son of a bitch? <laughs> For sure. All right. Send it to uh, Discord. All right, so preparations otherwise good for everyone yeah all right so uh let me give me a second here i gotta figure out which map is which they're not labeled very A 
uh, astutely here, or intuitively. Okay, I think this is the right one. So, uh, you guys all set out and uh, make your way to the mountain. And as you keep going around the path, you slowly but surely, as described, begin to find this quarry. And it's kind of half quarry. Some rooms seem to be like kind of shit. Maps waking out on me here. So some rooms seem to be kind of, uh, you know, dug in. But for the most part, it's mostly uh, like a path on the mountain, and things are kind of like inca in, if you will, right? Uh, so, let's see here. Uh, doobie doobie doo. The way, the way Foundry has these maps labels is kind of fucking me up here. Because I can't see which one's which. Alright, here we go. And it doesn't like me switching around all these maps. Alright, so, I'm getting you guys all loaded up. Hold on. Give me a moment. I'm trying to figure this out. Uh, I'm gonna clear the chat. It's like wigging out, not letting me select my like whole cursor and stuff is going haywire here. Let me let me start restart this Joker. Y'all have to log back in, I think. Sorry. And give it a second and restart it. Or refresh it, I should say. See if this is working for me now. Yep, <laughs> it's working now. Okay, I don't know. I think my stuff just got logged up or something. Something kooky happened. Alright, so. <clears throat> without further ado, tell me, good sirs. And this map is at a fucking crazy. Hold on. 
Maybe that was the problem. They got this map that is like redonkulous size. I think that's why it was jacked up, because it was trying to load this goofy ass map, how big it was. Uh Is it wanting it to be this big? One square is full. Oh, okay. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Never mind. This map just is fucking humongous. All right, I'm I'm regarded. All right. So how are you guys? Uh, as you're so as you're traveling this path, how are you traveling in the usual, like, line, Darwin? Yeah. Uh, are, are we able to use exploration actions right here? Uh, um, sure. Uh, I'll be using avoid notice. Actually, hang on a second. Before I declare that I'm doing that, I may not be able to use it right now at the same time as scouting. If anything, I can scout it. No you, you, no, you want me to scout it because I give us plus two instead of plus one. Sure. I just have to check and see if I can use uh, a second exploration activity at the same time, which I can't. So, uh, yeah, I'll be scouting. Okay. So, uh, can you uh, roll check for me? Let's see. It's just a perception check with Scout, right? Mm hmm. Uh, let me fix an issue here. At least to that. Uh, ooh. So let's see here. All right. So what you said you have some kind of feat that gives you incredible scouting. Yeah, I'll get plus two to our bonus instead of the regular plus one. Okay, is anybody else doing any other thing as they approach? I will do my detect magic as a as Okay. Um Detect Magic, the exploration one. Uh okay. I mean, as you're approaching up this path, you're not detecting anything in particular. No, you know, extraordinary changes in the weave. Anybody else doing anything weird? No. Anything that you and I are just holding hands and skipping along. I did punch him up to 11 on his character sheet, which I think changes his AC and stuff. Uh, let me do this for him. I think he has to choose a feat and a skill, and that's it. Everything else should be automatic. Probably a spell at level 11. Oh, well. yeah. I'm sure. All right, so uh, as you all continue cautiously 
you are uh, getting a little bit, um, you know, bleary eyed, uh, but you eventually come around the shoulder of this looming summer shade mountain and you notice the path widening into a final steep ascent um, you can see at the very top of this rise that you have set upon some bodies impaled you can't quite make out uh you know what's what's going on they look to be like they're just standing at the top of the hill still almost but you see the spears coming up like through their necks making their heads tilt and jar um are we just on that normal main map or if it you open a new one? <sighs> I'm just on that big overview, that's all. I, I know. Yeah. yeah. Isn't sure. Eater of the mind, gotcha. Luckily, your preparation is what has allowed you to see uh, that these guards are not, you know, on duty anymore. Um, you, your scouting is what has allowed you to see that this is, this is a ruse. This has been kev cleverly set up for you. And yes, now that you know where you are at, here is the map. So, what will you do? The bodies are at the very top of this rise. So each one of these squares is 40 feet. Jesus Christ, holy fucking low resolution. Yeah, Paizo. Yeah. Okay, well I'm going to be moving stealthily whatever we do now. So the top of this rise is uh, up here. And each one, and you, when you said each one of these squares is forty feet, you mean the big square, the big not square the, of the map. That's why there's gotcha. eight little squares in between. Gotcha. They, they, when they imported this, they did it to the scale that Paizo dictates in the map. Yep. Wow. But when you go off into like some of the smaller areas of this, because it's a quarry, right? I guess they're trying to give you the idea that it's the top of this mountain has been quarried out. So when you enter into <laughs> some of the quarried places, it's a it's a smaller mountain for you. So I would move as a party instead of individually. So, how will you Let's proceed see. up this path? Can't speak for the rest of the party, but I'll be moving stealthily. Me as well. Neji and I are holding hands and skipping along. Well, if you're scouting and detecting magic, you're already moving at half speed, right? Uh, we haven't maintained the scouting at this point. Well, I mean, are you still scouting up the, as you move up this thing? Uh, I'm going to say at this point, no, because I can't scout and move stealthily at the same time until I get to legendary stealth. So, All right. I, mean, I, I will scout things because plus one's a plus one. If you guys are moving out half speed, I'll be moving at least lower too. I mean, if you're scouting and we're moving as a party, then we'll have to move at half speed. 
Oh, can you guys move full speed? Both of you? I can. But if you're scouting, you have to move half speed. And we don't want to, like, split right. the party out here. Never mind, then. I'll quickly take the opportunity to read up my mage armor. All right, so generally, how much, how far do you guys want to move? Do you guys want to move up to where the corpses are, or? Yeah, start moving up there. Can I do a quick perception check to see around if there's any, if we're walking into an ambush here? Sure. That's... Uh, you don't see anything but a large expanse of mountain. Alright, looks clear to me, guys. You go check it out, I'll be at the back of the line. So, it showed me on the map where you, how far you guys would move. I could move all of you at once. Uh, let's move to this like little opening right here. Alright. As you all step forward, you notice that indeed there is a cave mouth piercing the hill right here, almost at the top of the path. Uh, at from this distance, you can tell that uh, these are in fact Jaltero guards. They're wearing the tabards of Canton Jaltero, and just as you seem to have suspected from your uh, scouting, uh, they equally seem to be propped up, uh, impaled and propped up to appear as though they're still on duty and everything is, you know, in order. Um, Which way do you want to proceed? You want to step into this cave? Yeah, I don't want to, but it's up to the party. Hey, if we're going to go into it, let me check it for traps first. Here. Okay, so do that here. Uh, you check it thoroughly and to decide it is just a cave. There doesn't seem to be any traps present. You guys proceed? Yeah. So, same order into the game? Yes. Damn, it's 
fucking up again. Hold on. Try just F5 reloading. Somebody's made better maps for this one, like the other ones. You think it's just the size of the map that's causing it to have problems, or what? Yes, it's the size of that map. It's like, just got it all fucked up. Alright, so. Let's see here. Uh, as you guys step into this cave, uh, you don't see any traps, uh, but uh, you do notice a faint light shimmering down this hallway, and you hear a murmuring of conversation uh, right, right down the end of this passageway. Um, luckily, you are uh, still benefiting from having scouted, and I believe you're all moving stealthily since the half of you are. So you at least have the benefit of not bumbling in here like a clown car. Uh, so, as you step in here, hearing this conversation, etc., and so forth, do you guys motion to each other any particular plan of attack? I mean, I can walk ahead and scout and see if I can see who's down there. Yeah. Well, at this point, you wouldn't want to scout. I think you'd want to just, like, seek. Yeah, I mean, I was just going to move stealthily to the end of the corridor here and see what was there. Yeah, well, hold, hold that thought for a moment. Let me fix something up ahead. Uh, well, so to seek, uh, you don't have to move, I don't think. You can just, like, declare that you're going to seek up in there. Uh, I wasn't going to seek, so I was just going to walk down to the end of this hall stealthily and see what the map shows. Because I don't think that I can... Because seek is also an exploration activity, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, no. I mean, you can do it. It's because that's how you would find somebody like concealed or whatever. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, now I'm just gonna move. Let's see more of the room. Uh, and then when you seek, isn't it like a uh, like a cone? some kind uh, well as you step right there f uh, four scarlet triad dudes all stop their conversation and look in at you and draw their weapons
So I'll let out a big cackle as I'm doing it and try to demoralize the closest. Same to the other dude at the front. You so, but you don't see any of them though. You oh. have to see them though. I mean, I understand it's a battle cry, but you have to observe them, right? Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Never mind. Alright, so. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, you're about to hear this. So. Uh, you hear a familiar sound because you know this too well. It is the thwack of a bow and the flying of arrows in rapid succession. And now you know combat is going on. And you are quick to run up the hall. Let me move it because I'm colliding with walls. Oh, let's see here. Back to the old reliable fireball. Indeed it does, as it roars and thunders and destroys uh, things, f furniture and fixtures in this room. As it roars and thunders and destroys everything in this room. Uh, all of these folks scream out in pain. And their cries are answered by a rush of folks from the other room who all wake up and uh, start to rush over to the aid of their companions fix this guy here uh, so that fireball does indeed make a loud boom 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 and wakes up a bunch of folks
and they are all headed over to this room now. Uh, Neji, his turn. Uh, fire courage first thing, and move up. Where you want him to move to? Um, get closer into the middle. I just don't know his movement. Forty feet. Oh, oh shit! No need to put him all the way up there because he's no. Oh yeah, get him oh, right by yeah. you, Vega. I think right, be... yeah, right in front of you. There. Yeah. All right. He's got one action. Shield. Shield on him, so. Yeah. Done. All right. Sir Derwin. This guy will make it flat footed for me. Uh, yeah, hold on. Ooh, 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 ooh. There you Smack him down with a critical little hit. He becomes frightened and in people. Yeah, that's it. strikes him down. That's three for me. Alright, so from the other room you hear a shuffling. And appearing at the door of this room is another thug. some more shuffling. Ooh. And another thug appears. This one deeper into the room. Uh, meanwhile, this fellow I'll waste no time uh, producing a club swing at you. You see this large wooden cloak coming a mile away though and dodge. Uh, more 
more shuffling from the other room. This fella, crassly, uh, d just doesn't even care about his uh, companion right here. Steps right on top of his dead body and swings at you with a flail. You're too crafty for them, though. Uh, again, you hear shuffling from the other room. And you sense that the force in the hallway has been bolstered. Dead. Uh, you, sir, are dead. We get out on me again. Alright, uh, let's see. Uh, finally. You see another thug appear at the entrance way here. To the uh, this guy. Let's see what he's got going on. Uh, he steps out of this pack. Oop, he steps right there first one. Steps down here, and this last action takes a swing at you with a great club. He connects, uh, and this club doesn't do a lot of damage, but it knocks you down to the ground. And you find yourself prone. Seeing all these guys come in, Vega starts whirling his hands about and casts Wall of Fire. I'd like to cast it in the radius, draw it out here. That. Get this guy in it right off the bat, and the other ones will have to walk through it once, if not twice. Okay, uh, but it's not all those red squares, right? Because it's a no, just uh, that guy down to the south, just on the right through the line, he would be the one getting hit right now. Once in the circle have to go through it to get hit, and the ones on the other side have to go through it twice to get out here. And that's all of my actions, three actions cast that spell. I yell, alright guys, bought us a couple of rounds to kill the for their outside. Alright, so uh, from the other room once more, uh, you hear shuffling. Uh, now Neshi, what 
you want him to do. Let's have him electric arc somebody. Have an electric arc this guy, and then bounce it into this guy. Alright. Good sir. Should we maybe demoralize that guy before we hit him? Lower his uh, save a little bit? I mean, we can. It's just one action to do that, right? Yeah. Yeah, let's do that because then he still can cast electric arc. All right. Uh, with his performance, he demoralizes. out a zap of electricity and they both get uh, fried a little bit uh, so all right uh, first action is to get up all right uh, when you do this thing Attack you. Oh, weird. You got knocked down. Mm -hmm. Go for that fucker. He whiffs on you this time, though, and you stand back up successful. Okay. Uh, I attacked twice with it. I did Oh, he targeted it. And I raised my shield for my last action. Hero point. Yeah. We have one. We got one. You have one, yes. Okay. Then yes, I will use a hero point. Why'd you have to say Vega? I always roll worse on hero points. Alright. Uh, Is that it for you? Yep. Andreas. Alright, Mr. Klingon Dwarf right here in front of me. I'm going to wave my weapons in a fainting faint of faint deception. Damn, he's been flat food for a long time. Alright, so you uh, swirl and twirl. And viciously strike this man. Dwarf thing. Evil him too. Him once more, this time fatally. And 
that's by three. Alright, this fellow, bewildered by his condition, uh, steps in the middle here and begins to wildly fling javelins through the flames at the only person he can barely see. Anything would be concealed on our side. Oh, he is. So, no need for that because he's missed anyway. Alright, this fellow, steering clear of that, uh, charges at you, Sir Derwin. Flails and misses. This fellow steps away from the flames. It swigs his club. It would also take the damage at the start of its turn as well. Alright, so he swings down on you for 16 damage, Drez, and knocks you prone with his big ass club. This fellow here, having formed his formation, carries out the same task of flinging javelins, and you're going to be concealed, and he's concealed. If anyone attacks him, Javelins land in the floor all around you. And your square is now looking like a pale fort. Uh, this thug here steps away from the flame and out of sight he disappears back into the quarry pit. This one stays in this formation and he walk through my wall again? follows his brothers. He did not walk through your wall. Why would anyone walk consciously through a wall of fire? Alright, so he follows the same tact and hurls javelins outside of this. fire cell he finds himself in. Two of them fall unlucky for you. Nowhere to move. And you get impaled slightly. Oh, and that is the end of another one of these long rounds. You guys want to Pause it right there since I don't think we could do another long ass round yeah. in five minutes. No, no, good for me. Good. All right. Complicated battle here going on. Neji will yeah. be happy to step into this one, I think. <laughs> With uh, whatever skills he should have. Let him know to pick new spells. Oh, yeah. He's probably got his sheet already. But yes, we'll leave it there and pick this battle up right in the middle of it again. GG. Yep, good game.
I don't know why it was fucking up on me tonight. It's no good.